welcome to the 65 Summit AI Unleashed. I'm joined today by John Tashik, Chief Market Strategy Officer at Salesforce for an enterprise AI spotlight on how intelligent platforms are reshaping the way we work. John Tashik, welcome back to the 65 Summit. So great to have you. I, I always love the chance to sit down with you. Thank you, Daniel. It's uh, we have the best conversations ever. So I'm, I'm glad to be here. First of all, you know, John, you've got a big remit, you know, leading market strategy and more. Uh, you've been around, by the way, how, just for everyone out there, how long have you been at Salesforce again? Just, just give me that number. I don't want to give you the exact number, but it'll be 22 years in July. You have, you have one of those little hour tickers? And, I do. It's a countdown clock. No, it, <laughs> no, I love it here. So it's, you know, 22 years, it seems like the beginning to me. Well, you've, you've been there for a minute and you've probably been through uh, many iterations, instantiations, updates, changes, transformations, acquisitions, expansions, contractions, market pivots, shifts, geopolitical ups and downs. You've been through quite a bit, but have you been through anything that's been as fast moving, transformational, disruptive uh, as this sort of AI agentic moment? No. And I thought it was, uh, you know, when I joined the company, there were only 300 people at the company. And I thought that was like super fast moving to, you know, move from on premises into the cloud, on demand or SaaS, whatever it was called back then, but into the cloud. No, this is much faster than that. It's much faster than the internet, which I covered. It's much faster than database technology. It's much, uh, it's faster than anything uh, I've ever experienced. At the same time, the company's kind of more or less the same. You know, we're we address the, the, the market the same. We have the same values. We treat ourselves as a startup. I mean, there's well over 70,000 people now, uh, but the culture is very similar. So uh, we're tackling it on, but it is coming much, much faster. It's interesting, um, probably a case study in itself of how you go from 300 to 70,000 and keep your culture intact. Uh, but I can say, and I haven't been around it for 22 years. Actually, John, if I go back that long, I'm still in college. I don't know if that makes me older. Not to date me, more. not to date me, but yes, uh, <laughs> uh, a lot's changed in 22 years for sure. But uh, I will say there are definitely some aspects, as I experienced uh, working with and interacting with Salesforce, that can be very startup. And some of the kind of culture, the Ohana the family, the sort of uh, belief. You, you experience it every time, at least I do, every time I go to Dreamforce and sort of seeing how the company interacts. And, you know, we're sort of professional event attenders, John. You know, in my world, I, I probably, you know, make it to 70, 80 a year at least. Um, and you do get to see a lot of different cultures. But you're also a company that kind of catches things first. Um, you know, there's this kind of line I still like from the movie The Big Short, you know, where... Uh, the character that plays Michael Burry, the, the, one of the great short sellers that caught that moment, he goes, I, I may be early, but I'm not wrong. And then uh, the guy responded to him. He said, oh, it's the same thing. But uh, Salesforce has been early on many things, right on many things. Um, you know, it's, it's pivoted some things. Like, for instance, it was very, uh, it saw the opportunity of AI, enterprise AI very early. And now it's had these different instantiations of it. Uh, it had Einstein early on and Genie and and now you have agent force, which is kind of like this progression that went on. But talk a little bit about, you know, kind of the AI journey that Salesforce has been through, through for yourselves, um, for your customers. Like this has been a pretty massive pivot, but it hasn't been as fast for you as some companies. You've been doing it for, I mean, it's been several years that AI has been really front and center at Salesforce. Yes, and you're right. And we were early. Uh, it's not that AI didn't exist in a predictive way or rules-based way before. Salesforce, but uh, integrating it into enterprise apps over a decade ago, uh, we acquired a company called MetaMind. We had done our own predictive research, of course, but when we acquired MetaMind, we started a research lab. We did a lot of work and research on, on AI, especially predictive, but we also started getting into data architectures, uh, LLMs, prompt engineering. We have a lot of patents on that that started uh, years before ChatGPT was released to the wild which is now just, what, two and a half years ago, Crazy. roughly. Um, that time is very compressed to me. Um, but uh, yes, the, the, the research lab has done an incredible amount of work and integrating it into the enterprise applications to make it seamless to the, to the customers who are using it and their customers who are using their solutions. 
and it, it, it's given us a, a huge competitive advantage. You know, in a way, it doesn't even seem like a pivot. Uh, of course, from it, of course, from the outside world, that's exactly what it seems like. Internally, it seems like a progression that's rapidly evolving. And it's because we had done this work um, at, in LLMs and prompt engineering, we were doing all kinds of things. We were um, we were doing like you know gene research out of the research lab and uh, published in Nature magazine several years ago. And if you call it a pivot, which I won't, um, it, it would be a very um, quick evolution that started actually four years ago when we were getting our data strategies in order in order to make AI make more sense uh, into the and, and more usable and actionable and embedding that in all the you know the platform that we have uh, the platform and the clouds you know sales cloud service marketing platform commerce all the all the things that were traditionally called CRM and when agentic came out I said well, you know, the first instances that came out were co-pilots, which more or less added individual productivity, uh, but didn't consider a lot with business policy and um, the, the way businesses work. So very good leapfrog there for co-pilots, but Agentic gave us a whole new era that we were perfectly well set up for. If I can capture it in a few in a phrase john it's a bit about kind of this pervasive iteration is sort of why it didn't feel like a you know a pivot in so many ways because it was sort of the layering on it's very much what SaaS has always been right is the ability to sort of you know perpetual pervasively update and change things to add what is needed and as ai has come to the forefront you can do that in SaaS because you don't need to rip and replace it's a feature that hey the next feature was able to use a copilot the next feature was able to use some type of ml to better maybe understand churn risk or deal likely you know hood of deals closing likelihood um but it keeps getting more intelligent and the amount of data that it's able to use keeps becoming larger and as that data becomes larger then it's about picking the right data that's going to likely get you to the right outcome that's going to enable an agent to maybe perform the right task to do it concurrently. But, you know, if there's one thing about Salesforce that, you know, someone, you know, in, in your role and among your team really probably has to answer for in the future is going to be how does software change in this era? And agent force is a clear intent. You could say it's not a pivot. I would say it's a pretty big transformation of the company, though. Um, you're going to get more horizontal. You have to, right? Salesforce has to say, look, we, we don't have every application. But we want our agents to be able to talk to every application. How are you sort of thinking about doing that so you can become one of the most, continue to be as a fair word, one of the most critical platforms that companies use day in and day out to run and make decisions in their business, both agentically and with humans? Well, you're kind of asking an existential question and well, as well as a pragmatic question at the same time. When Salesforce started, the business model was one of the innovations that we had along with philanthropic model, as long as delivery model, as an update model, um, being a platform model, being agnostic through API model, um, and, uh, and continuous delivery roughly three times a year for the product for, for 25 years. That would be the pragmatic. We still do that, except it's more often, more than once a month now, um, changing from model where it's per user per month and entirely predictable for you're paying for a seat and then you get access to the technology into a business model that involves more flexible pricing and consumption that uh consumption-based pricing so that's that's one of the things that's that we're doing as far as the technology goes and the innovation goes we obviously are still working on every single part of the business whether it's better sales or better service or ser customer service or better commerce marketing across the board uh, we're still uh, we're still doing that customers still ask for it still want it when agenda comes in it's giving actions 
and autonomy to the agents so that they can work on your behalf. In order for that to happen, we had to do a bunch of foundational technology, including trust. So if you look at what the way that Salesforce announced the product lines, we first came out with, well, you said Genie, but that, that was a short-lived name. It's Data Cloud um, and the data architectures. The second thing we did, and the first in the agentic world was trust, a whole trust layer, which did toxicity um, detection. It, 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 in order for a platform to be usable, and valid within a business and with business policy, it has to be trusted. Otherwise, they'll use it and get rid of it. So the trust layer was incredibly important. And that was two years ago. And, um, and since then, the Agentic Agent Force, which was just launched in at Dreamforce, how many months ago was that? Eight months ago or something like that? Um, just yesterday, John. It, it seems like yesterday. Again, time is time is a, a very um, elusive to me these days. <laughs> but but when we launched uh, Agent Force, which is the agentic part of Salesforce, the foundational parts are already being worked on. Uh, you know, they're, they're never going to be complete, but they were already already being worked on and delivered. So agentic makes more sense when it's. You know, combined with the rest of the architecture. And when you look at uh, the market, because you mentioned like we're, we, we have to go more horizontal. Well, I firmly believe CRM is very horizontal. It's anything that touches the customer. Now the customer may in, in the future involve an agent, but a customer. It's a pretty wide scope with a very large total addressable market, but we can go even farther than that. And if I could like show you right now and visually and visualize our agent force architecture, you will see a very horizontal platform and it's already being used in that capacity. I could talk to you about this all day, but the beauty of the six, five summit is these are, these are sort of like rapid fire conversations, John. So I've got, uh, I got one more for you. Um, you know, we assessed very closely the agent space, and uh, we also did some interesting work with uh, with Salesforce on, on agentic AI. We found that there was trillions of dollars of efficiencies to be gained. There's even more trillions of dollars in productivities to be gained. There's tons and tons of question about what the future of work looks like, which that's a whole nother topic. But just from a standpoint of customers, since this is a, this, thousands of enterprise customers watch the summit. And they, they're, many of them are the customers of Salesforce or, you know, enterprise software consumers. They're trying to deploy this stuff. You know, I know at Dreamforce last year, Mark was, he got up and talked about some customers that were already deploying agents, getting value. What are you seeing now that you're eight months later, the product's further developed, you've built out more data, more trust. I, I'm really glad you brought up trust, John, because I think that layer sometimes is forgotten because of how fast we're moving. But uh, we really need to make sure we're not spilling data <laughs> and doing this. But like, what are you seeing in terms of POCs turning to um, broader deployments, customers getting value quickly? Um, how is that accelerating in terms of the against the objectives that you have at Salesforce? Uh, it's accelerating so fast and it's changing uh, daily. The customers seem to be aimed at efficiency at the beginning like how can i be how can my workforce be more efficient sometimes that translates into can i let some people go and and have the same uh, capacity same operations and there's there's customers still out there that demand efficiency because you know they want it and they need it they have to manage to their their own budgets and their own growth what's changed is much more of a growth mindset is how Agentic can make the company scale broader using the same people or maybe skills developing, you know, some, some employees to, so to have different skills and more strategic. Uh, and it's much more growth focused. And it's also going into industries that are fairly broad you know at dreamforce we, we we said hey here's a book publisher they needed to, you know they have this very streaky you know um you know life cycle in their year um how do that how do they just manage that 
and be great at it. Well, that's uh, that's one area. We're seeing that when Agentic comes up and the way we're positioning it is that customers are no longer looking at a particular silo necessarily. They're not looking at just efficient customer service. Now, we're our own use case in our own customer service. We have a huge ROI for ourselves in using agent force internally, and that's great, but it also is better. And your report and your, and your methodology was incredible. Thank you, Daniel, for that. Um, showing that this is a multi-trillion dollar uh, market. <laughs> uh, as far as uh, as far as the workforce is concerned, and the total addressable market is just increasing, when people start thinking out of their out of the silos, and so that's the change, uh, and only in the last few months. Um, again, Agent Force is only a few months old, uh, but we're seeing that very dramatically, and um, the total addressable market for agents, I think you identified, is about five billion. A few months ago, that was. It's probably grown beyond that. So oh, it's, it's going to be a, it's a it's a it's an opportunity that, that will probably land in the trillions just because of the cost takeouts and then the acceleration. John, I mean, look, our perspective is there are a lot of sort of questions about how these things coexist with work and how we augment the workforce and how we then accelerate. But every every industrial revolution has created more, not less. And so sometimes as we get into those sort of, oh my gosh, this thing's going to write my research for me. We realize that, you know, we automated things like social media posting and it didn't get rid of the need for content creators on social media. Like there are things that happen, but AI is incredible. The pace that's moving, John, to your point. But one of the things I really want to just, is before we sign off here is just, it's really great to hear that customers and enterprises are getting value. We spend a lot of time focusing on these sort of consumer use cases search, um, you know, uh, LLMs and AI, but the ability for companies to deliver service more quickly or to be able to fulfill orders and products more efficiently or, you know, to speed up drug discovery, to, you know, engineer better designed cities, things that AI and agents and, and will help is just very, very exciting. And of course, in the end, uh, we all have to take care of our customers. So the best tools that enable us to be very responsive and supportive of customers building those long-term relationships. And it's great to hear, John, that Salesforce is doing the work. It's got deployed product in the field, but it doesn't take years to get this out there. And in fact, in weeks and months that companies can em uh, employ and deploy this kind of technology. John, I got to leave it here. Um, we should definitely reconnect soon, talk more about this. I can't imagine a year from now at our summit where this will be at. Thanks so much for joining us at the 2025 Summit. Then you said that so perfectly. Thank you for allowing me to be here. It's a true privilege. Thanks for joining us for this Enterprise AI Spotlight at the 65 Summit. Stay connected with us on social and explore more conversations at 65media.com slash summit. More insights coming up next.